thought for the day. You alone are enough. You have nothing to prove to anyone. Welcome to 7 Minutes for Yourself. I'm Christina Ina, and I'm so glad you've joined me for what I believe will be 7 of the most enriching minutes of your day. Let's take this time to reconnect with ourselves and improve our well-being. In today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself, we are continuing yesterday's discussion on how to maximize our success by being our authentic selves. Have a listen. The last thing that you should ever do is to submerge that which is uniquely you. Any time that you are trying to behave or speak in a way that is inconsistent with who you really are, you will create a competitive disadvantage for yourself. If your success depends upon your ability to successfully penetrate relationships, the easiest way to penetrate a relationship is to bring your authentic self to the table. If you bring your authentic self to the table, people will trust you. And trust is at the heart of any successful relationship. It is at the heart of any successful relationship. As quiet as it's kept, most people are not comfortable in their own skin. So when they see someone who is comfortable and confident in their own skin, they will gravitate towards you. They want some of that. That was a very interesting lesson for me to learn. When I first started in this business, I didn't want anybody to talk about the fact that I was a singer. I wanted to be known as a no-nonsense, hard-driving, analytical, quantitative investment banker. I'm not here to sing and dance, boys. Let's not get it twisted. <laughs> I didn't want anybody to talk about that until I saw the client reaction. My colleagues would often go into a pitch with me and say, oh, this is Carla Harris, our capital markets banker. But what you really ought to know about Carla is that she's an amazing gospel singer. She's done three CDs, four sold out concerts at Carnegie Hall and blah, 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 blah. And there I was rolling my eyes until I saw the client reaction. Oh, you're a singer. Oh, I so admire people who can sing. I personally love to sing, but my family will only let me sing in the shower. And <laughs> And maybe you could talk to my daughter about how she can integrate her love of the arts and her academics and blah, blah, blah. And there we were having a 15 minute meeting before the meeting. Are you with me? Take the lead. So when I sat down to pitch, they heard me with a different ear. They saw me through a different lens. I naturally differentiated myself from the other five bankers that would come in there and pitch that same IPO that afternoon because Carla Harris, the singer, was allowed to be in the room with Carla Harris, the banker. So anytime I walk into a new situation today, I bring Carla Harris, the investment banker, Carla Harris, the investment manager, Carla Harris, the prayer warrior, Carla Harris, the singer, Carla Harris, the writer, Carla Harris, the speaker, Carla Harris, the golfer, Carla Harris, the football fan. I bring all those Carlas to the table. Because I don't know which Carla will be the one that will connect and will allow me to own that relationship in a proprietary way. The second pearl I want to leave you with tonight is if you consider yourself a leader in the 21st century, you must be comfortable taking risks. You must be comfortable taking risks. 15 years ago, you could create a competitive differential for yourself in the marketplace if you had information that other people didn't have. But today, information is a commodity. So the only way that you can differentiate yourself is to show that you are comfortable taking risks. But interestingly enough, as we have been in the economic environment that we have been in for the last five or six years, and I've traveled around the country, all I've heard from people is keep your head down, keep your head down, don't rock the boat. You know, 8% unemployment, now 6.6% unemployment. We're having our third reduction in force. We are restructuring again. Just keep your head down. Well, take the lead, Arizona. I'm here to tell you that keeping your head down will not keep you from getting shot. So you might as well keep your head up so you can see the bullet coming. No. I say that in jest because what I'm really trying to tell you 
is that when we are in environments like we have been in for the last five or six years and everybody else is besieged with fear and everybody else is ducking, you have clear vision. You have clear vision to see the opportunity. This is exactly the kind of environment where you can markedly accelerate your success no matter what kind of organization you are in. This is exactly the time to say, oh, I know that we're trying to maintain our profitability. I have two thoughts about how we should do that. I know we're trying to cut costs. I have three ideas about how we should do that. I know we now have two people doing the same job that eight people were doing. That sounds like a process redesign. I'd like to take that on. Translation to management, boy, she's not worried about the layoffs. He's not worried about losing his job. She's trying to put points on the board. He's trying to move the ball down the field. He, she is a keeper. The issue with keeping your head down is that you submerge your voice. And your voice is at the heart of your power. And if you submerge your voice, you will become irrelevant. That concludes today's episode of 7 Minutes for Yourself. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. Today and every day with your kiddo is a gift. Enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in.